What's up, YouTube fam? How are you guys doing? Uh, so, the title's obvious. I have basically... It's Wednesday now. Race is Saturday. I got like three days to get this bike ready to race A2 Anaheim 2 Pro Supercross. And I'm going to show you guys basically what it's going to take to get this beast of burden ready to uh, hit the track at full speed. Basically for starters, after every race, it's uh, all race bikes are torn down uh, to the frame, engines pulled out, everything's inspected and cleaned. Um, this one got rebuilt, uh, mufflers get repacked or just serviced, meaning they uh, make sure all the rivets are tight. Um, if they aren't tight, then you drill them out, replace them. Uh, clean all the exhaust parts, go through all the bolts, clean all the dirty grease off of them, and then reapply new grease. Um, same thing with the the uh, engine bolts, all the linkage, hoses get inspected, uh, clamps get either replaced or inspected, and everything just gets cleaned back to new new again so we can throw it on to the race machine. So Mr. Tyler Antic Nap can be in the night show and hopefully make the main. So I've already started on cleaning the frame. I apologize I didn't show that, but I'll at least show you what I use. Here's a quick gander at what I use. Uh, I need to refill it, but uh, good degreaser, WD-40. Uh, WD-40, a lot of people it's a think it's a lubricant, but it's really not. It's, uh, it's um, a solvent and it's a great cleaner especially for bolts that are rusting you know you could get off the rust with this stuff it is a good lubricant uh, not as good as it is a solvent for cleaning i almost think wd is better wd-40 is better for cleaning uh, and it leaves a nice oily sheen on things uh, you need to get yourself a good stack of shop rags for cleaning the frame i use green uh, scotch bright pads and uh, brass you can't tell it's brass because it's dirty but brass brushes in to get in between all the frame spars and get all the dirt out of all these areas, especially in the hinges of the foot pegs um, back here where the linkage connects um, and just really to clean up the frame nice and good. And then go through all the wiring after that. I'll show you what we use there. And for the electronics, basically all the harnesses for all the wires, that come out of the ECU, PCM, um, the clips for the fuel pump, um, you name it really. I mean, even the spark plug cap. Um, but all the connections I use first clean it out with QD, uh, which is quick dry electronic cleaner. And then I put in just a very small bead of dielectric grease. Uh, what this helps do is it keeps the water out of the connections, uh, which is very important. You get water inside these and then a uh, fuel pump could cut off. You get sputtering. A lot of really bad things happen. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Obviously, uh, the air filter needs to be changed out. The air box needs to be cleaned because um, it is quite dirty it's amazing what these supercross bikes go through and uh, lastly but not least uh, just inspect all the frame completely all the way around look at all the welds make sure we do not have any cracking anywhere uh, or fracturing on the frame it is very common for these guys to break frames in the sport so I have to go through all the welds and make sure that those are prime and then uh, little details come in, sharpen up the foot pegs for him, uh, get a little better grip on the pegs. And um, for that, I just have a flat file. I'll show you where the flat file is. Yeah, this one right here. Here's the flat file. And all I do, I just come in here, angle it just slightly, and I just, get its cutting edge back usually you can go across to each one but a 
this up. But obviously I'll work it more than that until it's nice and uh, sharp. So, but first I gotta finish cleaning this thing because it is very, very dirty. Get all these louvers all cleaned up. And things basically that the pressure washer missed and start assembling. cleaned up looking frosty but this is why we inspect things let me show you you see that crack that's no go that's gonna need to be either re-welded or replaced so bummer on that, and I don't know why, but Honda didn't doesn't weld this all the way on both sides. Meaning, this side right here, there's nothing, and this side, well, yeah. Now we got the frame all cleaned up, and we realize what repairs we need to be made. Uh, we're going to get another subframe. Um, Sometimes welding them will fix it, um, but other times they'll crack again. So we'll probably get this one welded and have it as a backup, but we'll use a new one in the meantime. Uh, to assemble, I'm going to be using Loctite 243. It's a blue uh, thread locker. And um, for all the bearings and stuff, uh, Staplex, it's a red, red grease. My brush is coming apart. But it's, um, it's just, it's, extra pressure it's a high uh, high load grease and um, it's good up to about 300 degrees so we can use it in just about anywhere and it's not going to melt um, this stuff uh, with when it comes in contact with water it doesn't rinse out as easy so it leaves a nice film and um, keeps the parts lubricated so gonna get it onto that in and that wasn't easy uh, time to take the motor mounts the bolts for the motor mounts anyways and all we're doing is we're putting a light real light film on it um, don't want to goop it up too much because that just attracts dirt and this thing comes apart frequently enough where nothing's gonna seize but you do want to make it so uh, we don't want any moisture to get in between the uh, the case and the bolt because that can cause it uh, to gall or seize make it difficult to come out how about that just got to wiggle it around a little bit You don't want to just slam it in there either. You want to be methodical, take your time, make sure everything lines up. Don't force it. There we go. Now time for some Loctite on those threads. So what I recommend uh, is put a little bit of Loctite inside the nut. And it's really a dabble, do you? You don't need a lot has a flat washer goes on so anyways you guys don't need to see me put in all the bolts do you 
So I'll just catch up back with you after I get all the hardware in or all the engine mounts. Now it's time to put in the throttle body and hook up all the wiring and clean out all of my connections, like I said, uh, with the quick dry cleaner and then a little dab of dielectric grease to keep the moisture out. Here we go. to clean up all of these parts uh, for doing that I'm gonna be using my WD-40 and a microfiber towel and just kind of going through getting them completely clean um, it's easy you just take off the gas cap and then this plastic lid comes off and you can clean it all and then come down in here into the pump head uh, and um, just clean this really good spray that out with the quick dry electronics cleaner put some dielectric grease on it and then install it on the bike Okay, I had to cut it off from yesterday because I ran out of daylight. Uh, we got daylight back. Now it's time. I, I pre-treated the swing arm with some degreaser. So it's time to take it back, fire up the pressure washer, and get to scrubbing on this dirty old thing because uh, she's pretty grimy. So, anyways, uh, I went this morning and got another bottle of degreaser. Uh, brand doesn't matter. I just use whatever works best for you and I'm gonna go set it up get her all washed up
What are you doing, Bruce? What are you doing? You getting some sunshine? You getting some sunshine? Yeah. Anyways, guys, all right, swing arm's all clean. So I got my grease set up over there. I blew it out with some compressed air. We're gonna take apart the linkage, and then we're going to reassemble. Um, so I'll show you how that process goes. So basically, we just wanna remove all these pivot bolts, so the pivot, um, excuse me, pivot sleeves that go inside the linkage here. Just dry them off really good, make sure I got all the water out. And then inside, sure enough, they're pretty dry. Let's see if I get you the shot. Pretty dry. When they leave the manufacturer, they really don't uh, put too much grease on them. But we will. We're gonna run this brush through here. Just like that. Don't wanna cram it full, but something like that. Put our bearing race back in there. And I swedge that grease around. Make sure to wipe off any excess because any uh, excess will just attract dirt. You don't want that. And then these collars here, they go on the outside in the seal, just like that. Repeat on the other side. Again, uh, ran into an issue, but it, this one isn't so critical. But you see how this is the bolt that goes through the swing arm here in the frame and through the bolts of the swing arm. Um, it has some excessive wear on just the front part. Um, these are this is literally how the manufacturers send these out, you know, with a very light swedge of grease. And what ends up happening is the load uh, that these guys put on these bikes, on these jumps and stuff, it'll start to wear away. Uh, and uh, eventually you'll be able to feel a notch where that bearing was riding. And obviously this goes through the middle of the engine right here, and this goes to the other side of the swing arm. So what you need to do here is don't neglect this. Don't just clean that and leave that. What you gotta do is get that WD-40 I was talking about and soak this thing. And don't just leave it soaked, 
let it sit for a second and we'll get our green scotch bright and get all these uh, burns off of it. Now there's no exact science to this other than just uh, I use the green scotch bright. You don't want to use any sandpaper or anything like that where it's really aggressive. Uh, but just so use a scotch bright pad and you'll just start to remove that the rust on there. Because rust attracts more rust. And then if you've ever bought an old bike that's sat for a long time and the engine needs to be rebuilt and then you go to remove the engine and the swing arm bolt is stuck, this is why. This is exactly what happens. So we're going to stop it in its tracks, get all this rust removed, and we are going to grease this pig and put her back together. So now you can see the burn marks are reduced. There's no more rust on them. Uh, obviously you're not going to get it perfect um, unless you just bought a new one, which we can do. We can always go buy another one. But I'm just going to keep scrubbing this thing until the large majority of the burn marks are gone. A little extra effort goes a long way on these bikes. I got it all clean and these uh, burn marks now when you run your finger over them you can't feel anything anymore it's nice and smooth the staining will be there and that will remain but at least we got the burns knocked down we take our red grease and the amount of grease doesn't change how much it's going to be reliable actually just putting a film on it all the way around like this will keep it from sticking inside those bearing races and yes I consider that a light film so now uh, this bolt only goes through one direction go through both directions but it's designed to go in one direction shall I say I need a rubber mallet now I'm still waiting on the suspension to come back from the suspension tech um, so I'm not going to completely get this bike together tonight but I will finish getting the linkage on and uh, Obviously, routing the brakes. Just struggling, huh? Uh, keeping everything clean all the time is like really critical. You get grease and you transfer it somewhere, it's on your hands, you move it and you get grease somewhere else. It's real critical, you always keep it free of grease. That swing arm came out beautiful, huh? Tell you what, that scotch bright on aluminum just does magic. Next, I'll save you, but I'm gonna pull same thing on these, slide the races out, re-grease the bearings inside these, and reinstall these, get the linkage all hooked up, and I'll be right back. Well, guys, I'm gonna shut down the video right here, right now. Uh, the wind's picking up. It's starting to get a little chilly. I'm still waiting on the suspension from the suspension tech anyway. Oh, you got a smudge. Ugh. Got it. Anyways, still waiting on the suspension from the tech. Uh, next video, you will see Tyler Antignat, probably himself. I'll probably pick up when he's here, and uh, we'll um, pull apart... Um, what else we got to do to it which really isn't much we got to get the plastics on it and um, you know the suspension get the wheels on and that's basically it at that point so 
uh, we're getting real close here make sure you keep your eyes open for that video and you can meet Tyler and uh, then we'll get this bike out to the track and get some tuning done on it but from the shop garage whatever this is Clint Lund with Lund MX I love every single one of you guys and I will talk to you soon peace out